here are eight awesome MCP servers you can use right now to double your productivity when using AI code editors like VS Code, Cursor, and Windsor, or AI applications like Cloud. MCP is like a USB-C port for AI apps. I made a video already explaining how they work and how to install your own MCP servers. So we will not cover that again here. If you missed it, watch this related video after finishing this one. All of the following servers have different installation instructions, so we're going to skip that and focus on what they can do. You can find links to each one of them in the description below. You are about to see servers for Notion, Figma, browser automation, and more. But what is important to understand is that even though they're all very powerful on their own, when you use them together is when you really start feeling the magic. For example, we can use the browser server to do some research, then use the Notion server to take notes, and the sequential thinking server to plan out our project. It's nuts! Okay. First off, the official Notion MCP server. This server exposes tools to create, update, and delete Notion pages, databases, blocks, comments, and more. To make sure it is used, make sure to tell the AI to add it to the page where you want to save the information, like here where I asked it to give me a list of ideas and add them to the brainstorm page. Next up is Context7, an MCP server to use when coding that fixes problems, like when the AI replies using old and outdated versions of packages, or hallucinating APIs that don't exist. Exist. Context 7 fetches the latest and most up-to-date documentation and puts it in the prompt. It has a documentation of more than 10,000 packages. Without Context 7, you can see Cursor giving me an old answer when I ask it to tell me how to enable dark mode using Tailwind CSS. The answer is right but outdated. The Tailwind config.js file is not used anymore. Now check out what happens when I enable Context 7 and tell it to use it. To avoid having to write use Context 7 every time, you can write a rule file to tell your editor to use it by default. Next up is the Microsoft Official Playwright MCP server that you can use to control a real browser from your chat window. It has all the tools you would expect. Clicking, scrolling, typing, opening new tabs, closing tabs, going back and forward, and more. I can, for example, ask it to go to normalcoders.co and check if the Superbase title is visible. As you can see, it opens a new tab, navigates to the page, checks if the title is visible, and then reports back. That is a silly test. A more advanced version would be to write a whole test flow. I click here, click there, type this and that, and then tell me if certain conditions are met. The Playwright MCP server also lends itself well to do scraping, data mining, and market research in websites that require authentication or a bunch of steps to get the data you want. You need to be careful though, because your IP address will get rate limited or Band if you do that too much since the browser runs from your machine. To avoid your IP address getting banned, you can configure Playwright to use a proxy server that hides your IP address. To do this, you can use Floppy Data, the sponsors of today's video, which is a very powerful proxy service designed for secure browsing, automation, or large-scale data collection. They have millions of IP addresses in more than 195 countries, including residential, mobile, and data center proxies. In the case of scraping, you will want to use rotating proxies, which Floppy Data has, although they also have static ones if that's what you need. It is also very cheap, starting at just 90 cents per gigabyte of proxy traffic. And that's a lot of scraping you can do. You can choose proxies by country and even by city as well. To become even more undetectable, Floppy Data has mobile proxies, which are IP addresses issued by mobile cell phone networks to real devices. So the websites you access will think you are browsing from a phone. They come with automatic IP rotation every three to six minutes, and you can even choose between 3G, 4G, 5G, and LTE proxies. Once you have the proxy host name, port, username, and password, all you need to do is put it in a configuration file like this, and then point the Playwright MCP server to the configuration file. And that's it. Now your Playwright MCP will use the proxy server when accessing the internet. Next up is Sequential Thinking, a server by Anthropic themselves, the creators of Claude and MCP. This server is tiny and simple. All it does is expose a tool that makes your AI solve problems using a structured thinking process. It breaks down complex problems into manageable steps, it revises thoughts, it branches into alternative paths of reasoning, it adjusts the total number of thoughts dynamically, and finally it generates and verifies solution hypotheses. Here you can see it break down a complex question into step after step after step. Next up is the Figma MCP server, a server that exposes tools to read Figma files 
and components. This one is by far my favorite server of all. In a Figma file, I select a component I want to implement. Right click on it and select copy paste as and then copy link to selection. Then I go to the chat window and ask it to implement the Figma file for me and give it extra instructions like use Tailwind CSS. It will call the tool since I mentioned Figma in the prompt. It will return the code and as you can see, it does an amazing job. Next time is another server implemented by Anthropic's team. This time, it is a server you can use to talk to a PostgreSQL database using natural language. This one is pretty cool if you are a marketing person or aren't strong at SQL. There is nothing to worry about since the server is designed to perform read-only operations, so there is no risk of the AI hallucinating and nuking your database. I use it mostly inside of Cloud Desktop since it can make graphs and charts to help you understand the data better. Here you can see how I add Ask it to make a pie chart with the percentage of normal coders users that log in with Kakao versus GitHub versus email as a pie chart. Next up is an MCP server that is incredibly useful for auditing web applications. Browser Tools MCP comes with a bunch of tools to audit the accessibility, performance, SEO, and best practices of a website. It even comes with a Next.js auditing tool. After installing it, you can ask it to audit a website just by mentioning it in the prompt. Like here, where I ask it to do an SEO audit of nomadcolors.co, it audits it and it comes back with the report. The last server I want to show you is called MCP YouTube. It is a pretty useful server that will take a YouTube URL, extract the transcript of the video, and put it in the prompt. Very useful when you want to chat with a YouTube video, like when you don't understand something 100% and want to ask questions about it, or you want to get a summary of the video. Here, I am pasting the URL of the MCP video I made before and asking it to summarize it for me and give me the most important ideas. I use this server a lot when I want to get the knowledge of a YouTube video, but I don't want to watch the whole thing or want to avoid getting distracted by comments and related videos. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found a server you can use. Please like the video if you did and subscribe to the channel if you would like to see more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.